it's Ifter, and I'm back with more Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Last time we got done with Mitsuki and swapped over to Morishige, did a couple things. But other than that, we were warned not to go into the second wing, which for now I'm going to avoid, because that seems like a smart thing to do. Time to deal with the loud music again. So, so far this game has been pretty interesting. It's kind of nice to see a little bit more of the characters that got primarily just kind of ignored. Especially Morishige. Uh, the door to the infirmary is frozen in place, as if it's just a decoration on the wall. It can't be opened. Alright. Cool. Shig, don't look at me. What? Am I hearing things now? No, no you're not. Oh, wait, what was that? There's some sort of stain on the wall here. Such a moist bowel impression the simple stain leaves. Could have caused it. Put yourself together, Sakataro. You need to find Mayu, then escape from this tainted place. I think she's a little bit busy playing uh, Parcheesi in hell. But, you know. Could you care? The door to the science lab is frozen in place. As if it's just a decoration on the wall, it can't be opened. Making sure there's no bodies as we go through here too, because those are real easy to miss. Um. All oh, right, we can't go up that way anyway. That goes to the third floor, and I guess well, let's head up and see what's there. There's a large hole in the floor here, blocking the way through this hall. Let's head back and see what's there! I've mentioned this many times, but the music is... excessively loud. And then it dies. It seems to be a school newsletter of some sort. Disaster training day! Prevent accidents, always be aware of your surroundings. Look before you act. Welp. There's some straw paper in the drawer. It's a photocopied handout. Class logbook is our memory. After you've all gone on to the next grade, I'll make sure I take good care of it. Oh. Okay. Got a face? No. Okay, let's uh let's go ahead and get out of here cuz ain't nothing here. It's kind of eerie when the music actually turns off even though I welcome the quiet. A request from Nurse Shinazaki. We received new furnishings. Please try to keep them clean. Let's take good care of the blah 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 blah. There's a whole line of milk bottles here, and each one of them is filled with a muddy, unidentifiable liquid. Oh boy. That's good. That's good. Not gross at all. Not gross at all. Let's head down to the end of the hall. This is the other side of that hole, where, well, previously we go. Oh, hello. It's a largely decomposed corpse. Based on body mass, it actually looks like it may have been an adult male. Probably a phys ed instructor. He seems to be wearing a jersey, and there's a whistle hanging limply around his neck. Looking closely, there appear to be lacerations across his entire body. 
the particular concentration along his back. There's no way this could have been made by a single assailant. Most likely he was flogged to death by multiple aggressors all at once. There's a custom name tag sewn into his jersey. Seisho Junior High School, Atsuya Goto. Okay. Can I go in this room? Apparently I can. Okay. I think that was the teacher that was killed by those uh, students we've been reading about. You're being watched. Okay. A message written here in China. He's here, right behind you. Don't turn around, because if you do... Okay. My reflection of the filthy window. Barely visible in the faint light of the school building. It's almost ethereal, as if I'm just a ghost myself. There's an inordinately large number of dead bugs inside. I want out of this room. Get me out of here. Get, get me out. I guess I can look for bodies. Since I am more a she guy, I better roleplay the part, right? I'm a body hunting fiend. Oh no. Blood on a chalkboard's not good. There's a message permanently carved on the blackboard here as if with a nail. Why? What did I do to deserve this? God damn it, it's all his fault. He is the one who made us do that ritual. Friends forever? Look where that got us. He's in here somewhere too, and if I see him, I'm gonna kill him. I swear I'll do it. I'll make as if I'm hugging him, like I'm also happy to see him again. And then I'll wring his filthy neck until I break his trachea. And then I'll curse him. Forever. Sounds like somebody had a bad day. Sounds like two people had a bad day. <laughs> oh, one person was having a bad day, and then two people had a bad day. Oh, boy. Things are just wonderful in Corpse Party World. Uh, anything here? Nope. Let's check the clock. Room. Hello, candle. Is this one of the class rep's candles? The yes, I mean, she's okay. We haven't seen the class rep in a while. There's a twisted length of wire inside. The door seems to be busted, so it should be easy enough to pull out. You never know when something like this might come in handy. Maybe I should take it with me. Ma. Eh, can't hurt to have this on hand. Now with that, we could use the kite strain to get the name tag. There's a half-rotted corpse sprawled out on the ground here. Seems to be a junior high school boy based on size and uniform. His student ID name tag is still fully intact. Shobu University Middle School. Osamu Morata. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, knee, knee, knee. I don't think they're going to let me go to the third floor, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, no. Okay. So we need to go... Well, don't I need to go all the way around so I can fish out the name tag? Right. Hold RB. Never mind, I thought it was on the second floor, but apparently it was the first floor. That's where Morishige started. So, uh... I'm gonna save, because I actually haven't saved in a bit. It'll take a bit of ingenuity to get whatever that is out of the hole. Maybe I can rig something up with this wire and kite string. Uh, yeah. If I had to bend this wire into the shape of a fishing hook, and attached to the kite string, I thought, then maybe I'd be able to bring up whatever it was down there, provided it wasn't too heavy. Well, it's not exactly a professional grade fishing rod, but here goes nothing. Hey, I got it! Not a lot of resistance either. It mustn't be all that heavy. I quickly but carefully pulled in the line. Damn. Whatever it was, it fell off the hook before I could bring it back up. 
Guess I didn't bend it tightly enough. Maybe it would be quicker to lower myself down to the hole after all. That would also be a far more reckless course of action. Just not sure what to do. Okay, now I'm actually gonna save. <laughs> uh, let's try going into the hole. Damn it. While well, I'm sitting here waffling, my might be in serious danger. If anything were to happen to her, I... Well, at any rate, all I need to do is lower myself down, grab whatever's down there, then come right back up. Couldn't be simpler. As long as I proceed slowly and cautiously, I thought I'd be fine. First things first, I need to figure out how deep the gap goes. The string went in up to here, so... A little over four meters? That's deeper than I expected. My height is 178 centimeters, so with arms outstretched, I'd be about two meters or so. Which meant if I grabbed onto the ledge with my hands and lowered myself down, I'd only have another two meters to fall. That seemed entirely reasonable. It was notably less of a drop than one would face when jumping from a second story veranda, for example. So the only problem then is getting back up. Maybe if I grab a few desks and chairs from the classroom and throw them in first. A little stacking could easily give me a meter and a half of extra height, I thought. That should get me plenty close to the edge of the hole. I'd probably be able to reach it and grab on with just a single jump. And <laughs> worst case scenario, Taguchi will be stopping by the entrance in less than an hour. It's close enough that if I yelled loudly, he'd hear me. Alright, that should do it. Let's get this over with. I think I sprained my ankle. The one thing I didn't predict was that the ground would be so uneven down here. Well, at least I could finally find out what the item was that I'd seen from above. It was like a small notebook. No, I recognized it. This was a student ID. In fact, it seemed to be a Kisaragi Academy student ID. No, it's Mayu's. What's she doing down here? Don't tell me she fell. Mayu! Mayu, are you here? Mayu! There were a considerable number of dead bodies down here with me. Most of them were full-on skeletons who seemed like they'd been here for ages. But a handful of them looked like they may have just died a few hours ago. There's so many of them. And virtually every one is wearing what looks to be a modern-day school uniform. What's going on in this wretched place? I briefly scanned the bodies of the departed in the dim unnatural light that filtered in from above. I found one that was wearing very familiar clothes. This was definitely the uniform at Kisaragi Academy High School. I was horrified. Mayu, please tell me it's not you. Ah, it's the class rep. Hey, Shinazaki? Both of Ayumi Shinazaki's eyes were wide open, but she wasn't looking at anything in particular. Those eyes weren't seeing anything at all anymore. Sh Shinazaki? Why? Who did this to you? Calm down, don't panic. Shizaki is dead. This is just a body. Just one of many in here. That's right, this is just a pile of meat that happens to be shaped like Shinazaki. It's not a person anymore, it's a thing. God damn it. Kishinuma should have been with her. What the hell was that incompetent jackass doing? He's probably off messing around with God knows what. Shinazaki all alone and helpless and now look at her. Probably take something for her family. Her uniform is too blood soaked, it would just upset them. Her underwear is out of the question, of course. And her hairband is just too common. I need something that one could associate with her personality. Personally. I know, the ghost story candles. Damn, because she doesn't have Mana anymore. It'll have to be her hair, the hair of the deceased. I don't have any scissors. I guess I'll have to use my teeth. Yeah, I'll just use my teeth. Gross. Gross. Ah. I had no idea human hair was so resilient. I don't think I could do this cleanly. What about a different part of her body? Perhaps a fingernail, a tooth. Or yes, that's it, a tongue. Her tongue's the thing. <laughs> it's alright, Shinazaki, isn't it? It's for your family's sake, after all. Now open wide. Oh, no, her tongue, it's missing. It's already been taken. God damn it, whoever did this, stop messing with me! I guess I have no choice then. I'll have to settle for a tooth! God damn it! It won't come out! Not if I'm pulling just my fingers anyway. Huh? What's happening? Why is everything going black? 
No, black, black, black! My, uh, uh, where are you? I, I'll protect. Uh, I actually didn't think that was gonna be a wrong end. I thought that I picked right the first time. But, well, that's it. And I am definitely out of time. But uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna go back and mess with um, that door and see what happens. But I could do it after this, possibly. But felt like I could do something more because I think I still have a little bit of time. So I will cut that in after this and I will see you guys then. Open the door and proceed out into the walkway. Let's do it. Just as my hand touched the knob, I was sent flying backwards by some tremendous force. For a split second, I swore I saw a figure. But that could have just been my imagination. Pain for my impact, however, was very real. <coughs> Maybe that was no illusion after all. And ultimately, I was unable to open the door. That actually do. Okay, so I haven't had a good opportunity to test this. Let's uh, see what happens if I do it again. Ooh. So we're getting a lot of darkening. I'm gonna use this to test. What happens if we reach 100%? Because I haven't done that yet. Mayu! I have to go! I have to look for Mayu! Wake up! Wake up! Mayu? No, it's a much younger voice. Who is it? Hey, mister. Wake up. W where am I? Good morning, mister. This is my playroom. The young girl thrust her face so close to mine that her nose was practically touched. She was smiling from ear to ear. She looked to be in about first or second grade. The long black hair and a clean, cute, almost dainty countenance. Gross. After my brief, Im brief impression, however, I quickly turned my head away. She was uncomfortably close, literally breathing down my neck and her breath. It smelled of blood, of death and decay, and fatty oils and smoke. It smelled of chemicals and antiseptic. It was a very, very unpleasant potpourri. Who are you? <laughs> I'm so happy. You didn't get all indignant and say, what's going on here? Normally when people wake up here, they get scared and start freaking out. The little girl began backing away from me, her shoulders still shaking in a soundless chuckle. I knew exactly what she meant, but it would be entirely reasonable to ask what's going on here. Even at a glance, I could tell this room was not good. The floors and walls were caked in blood as thick as mud. Buckets of body parts were strewn all about, and eviscerated corpses were stacked everywhere. And that was just what I could see at a glance. As for me, I was bound to a chair against one of the walls. Not with ropes, but with chains. My name is Sachiko. Shinazaki. What do you plan to do with me? Are you going to kill me? What a question. I'm just not sure. I'll decide later. I've got something else to play with first. Just as she said the word else, she brought her hand down on a nearby table in a slapping motion, and it made contact with someone. It was a girl bound by her hands and feet, and Sachiko's slap was aimed squarely at her thigh. Her uniform suggested she was in high school and she was wearing glasses, giving her a rather stern, serious appearance. I could hear the sound of chattering teeth and see her chest rising and falling rapidly and erratically. Suggesting she was paralyzed with fear. Her name is Emi Orabe. <laughs> the sound of her own name being read aloud from her student ID name tag, the girl let out a single whimper. No, no, stop, please, please stop. 
No way! You're about to be put through incredible pain! So make sure you squirm like the wretch you are and beg me to spare your life, okay? You're joking, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything! Shut the hell up! You're distracting me! Sachiko swung her hand downward into Emmy's face. I realized only after impact that there was a scalpel in it. A sloppy, uncontrolled incision was made from the corner of her mouth all the way to her ear. I'm sure that wasn't painful at all. Just kidding. I'm sorry, did that hurt? I wasn't seriously trying to kill you or anything, so don't let it hurt too much. The real pain is just beginning, after all. Sachiko produced a pair of durable sewing scissors from a rollaway shelf nearby and began expertly cutting all the way up Emmy's school uniform. Um, then she set down the scissors and produced a full-sized farming sickle in their place. Looked well-worn, with soil and rust sticking liberally to the blade. After branching it for a moment, Sachiko positioned it over Emmy's abdomen. <laughs> no, please, no, this is a dream. This has to be a dream. <laughs> I can't tell if you're awake or if you're dreaming, but you're about to find out. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Sachiko slowly shifted her focus from Emmy's abdomen to the area just below her rib cage. Wow, this is descriptive. Yeah. Emmy's body began spasming, her spinal muscles contracting in a decidedly unnatural manner. Gasps and screams mixed with sounds of vomit and incontinence. Oh boy. What a perfect facial expression. See, I knew you could do it. Without even wiping the drool from her mouth, Sachiko tossed the sickle aside and simply began digging into Emmy's wounds with her bare hands. The sound of tiny hands manipulating internal organs was disgustingly similar to that of a sopping wet rag squelching spilled oatmeal off a hardwood floor. Oh boy, such good imagery. The noises escaping Emmy's mouth didn't even sound like they were coming from a human being anymore. I could see your face in profile now, and despite the gastric juices and vomit and blood and contortions of unbearable agony, it wasn't a disagreeable sight. This was a girl not far from death. She was trying her hardest to fight it, but the facts were the facts. She was going to die and she knew it. Against this fate, she was completely and utterly helpless. She was doomed already, in both body and soul. This hapless struggle had a certain sensual quality to it. No, it was even purer than that. This was a truly beautiful sight. Isn't she pretty? Sachiko, who had at this point buried her head in Emmy's exposed organs, withdrew it and directed this question at me. Her mouth still full of flesh. Everything from her nose down was dyed red and dripping with blood. Mm. Isn't her face just precious? She swallowed whatever she'd bitten out of Emmy's insides and then turned to face me. Gross. Not just face me, actually, but stare at me. Stare into me with unwavering and blinking eyes. I suddenly became aware of my own erratic breathing. It wasn't fear, though, but an almost animalistic reaction. It was coarse and primal, and I unconsciously thrust my chest forward toward Emmy. I think I may have been smiling. So how about it? Do you want to play with her too? Don't be ridiculous. It's like she's making fun of me. She shouldn't even have to ask. Well. Good, good job, Morishige. Good job. Well, until next time, guys, take care.